Hi, this is William, welcome to Flyspoke. And I have in the vise here a uh, very common uh, coloration scheme of a fly for fishing up in Canada, especially in Quebec, but uh, really all over Canada. Um, to have a chartreuse and black combination is really common. You've got um, flies like uh, black bear green bud or Coburn special or um, uh, you know, there's a number of flies that have this same theme. Um, I really don't have a name for this one. Um, let's call it a uh, black bear green butt microtube. So um, I'm going to show you how to tie this fly right here. It's very, very uh, a common style uh, over in Scandinavia. Uh, it's filtering here now and uh, being used. Uh, the whole concept is if you look at the fly from underneath, it has this really wide profile. And the idea is that fish, uh, they see these flies by looking at them like this. They don't look at them at, from the side like we do. And um, this has a flash in it and has an awful lot of movement in the back. Uh, trailing in the back as it swims through the water. So the first thing uh, we're going to do is we have to build the tube. So from humor, you get uh, you get uh, these uh, these tube blanks, and these are the micro tubes. They're about six inches long to start. This one happens to happens to be in a chartreuse color, um, and you also from HMH. Uh, I, I like to use their um, hybrid tube. Now the difference between a hybrid tube and the standard uh, connection tube is the inside hole uh, is the same size except the outside is smaller. The walls are thinner and it makes for tying with the hybrid tube uh, a lot easier for me. So first thing I do is I check the length of the uh, um, the uh, micro tube and I want to know that it's going to be a good length. And what I like to do is I like to finish off both ends of my micro tube ahead of time. So you must hold it straight up in the air, get the flame close but not really uh, uh, having it burn and we're going to watch the tube as it folds over and you try to get a nice even fold on it. The hole will stay so long as you're holding it straight up in the air. Now I'm just going to let that, it's going to be my front, and I'm going to let that just cool and harden. Then I'm going to go around to the back of it, and I like to put a little tiny, just a little bit, don't let it go too far, on the back side as well. Then I'm going to take my hybrid tube, and again, this is a chartreuse hybrid tube, and to cut these, I use a... Uh, I use a razor knife because I want to get a nice 90 degree cut. So I'll cut one side. I'll judge how long I want my my junction tube to be and I'll cut the other side square. Now these I also like to just get the heat close to. If you look at the end, it's hard in the camera I would imagine. But all I do is touch it one little quick time and what you'll notice is a brightness just comes up on the end of that tube. Just me being a little quirky, I think. But now the reason that I finished off, and I'm putting together the micro tube into the junction tube. The reason I finished it off with that slight little, slight little bump is because I want that little lip there in the junction tube at the very end. That's my stopping point. So, now I'm going to take I'm going to take this uh, this is the spike graduated to get thicker and it goes in the end of the tube through the hole and now I push it on nice and tight. So it's basically on to and then I'm putting this into a humor tube attachment and that simply goes into my vise. Okay. 
I tighten this in my vise and tighten tighten the tube fly spike there and I'm ready now to tie the fly okay now I always start with these flies I use white base thread the reason I use the white base thread is because you can put any color on top of it and you're not going to see through Okay, this happens to be a 70 denier thread. It's made by Giorgio Bonacci. It's what they call their 12 aught. And I'm just going to put a little, I'm going to be right up on the junction tube. start right up on that junction tube and come right to the this inside edge of the junction tube and I'm going to start off and I'm just going to put a holographic gold tag on it and this is simply going to tie in here And I'm going to run down to that where I had put that that bump. And that's going to be my stopping point, right on the bump, or I should say, right in front of the bump. And then just come back to my tie-in point and secure it down. Trip. Now we're going to take a very light head cement solution and I'm just going to paint the holographic and uh, this is just putting a thin coat for protection. Um, we'll come back, I'm going to wait for it to dry and we'll come back. Okay, next item. I'm going to take some Arctic Fox. And uh, this is in this nice chartreuse color, very bright chartreuse. And I'm going to take a small patch and I spin it. Just twist it, makes it a little easier to cut off. And this, I'm going to take the under fur out. And then I want the guard hairs, but they're going to be too long, so I have to replace them a little bit shorter on the guard hairs and this is going to go in as a tail it's right up on the very end of where that junction tube is I only want it to be as long as the junction tube itself Okay, the next item in, I've taken a natural black, um, a natural black hackle, and I'm going to use this as a, um, as a body polymer body hackle. So I'm simply going to put that in. This is where we're going to make our transition off of the junction tube and onto only the micro tube itself. And I'm simply going to do that with dubbing. Now this is with the thread that I've put on there that's so compressed that um, it's not that's never going to come apart again. Um, some people actually do glue them just to to make sure that that's going to stay together. 
And uh, the next thing I'm taking is some uh, Davy Watton's Synthetic Living Fiber. And uh, this particular one is Green Highlander Green. But it, it's a very, very bright, very, very bright green. You could get into here using uh, fluorescent colors, any, you know, any kind of bright, bright color. And I'm putting this so it goes right over, right over the tail. And we're going to put this on pretty bushy, get it to be on the bushy side. So it's almost like we're overdubbing it. But we're only going to go so far because we need this space up front to tie wings on. Okay, make sure everything's out of your way. And we'll end right there. And just take our hackle. First turn right at the base. And then we're just going to put successive turns it's a pretty big hackle sweep it back there's a big advantage to using these very thin threads on salmon flies most people always in the past used much thicker thread but the strength of uh, this Giorgio Bonecci's thread is, is really substantial, so you really don't have to worry about uh, thicker thread. Okay. Okay, the first patch of hair we're going to put on as a, uh, as a wing is going to be the most substantial of, uh, of the three patches we put on. It's going to be the shortest patch, but it's going to be the one that really has some substance. And again, we're going to the Arctic Fox. And this time I'm going to leave all the, the under fur. Leave what I can of the under fur. And we have to judge length. And again, guard hairs are too long. I remove them and put them back, shorten up. Big long flies, you're going to want that. You'll want those guard hairs to be flowing longer. Okay, so I'm just going to hold this here. And I'm going to trim off what's not tying in. and tie this down. Now, the thing about this is we have to stack vertically now. We must put one material as we do this on top of the other and not keep moving forward. If you kept moving forward rather than right on top, you would wind up seeing, when you looked at the bottom, you would just see tying thread moving forward underneath. Now, what I'm doing with this is I'm spreading that. Can you see that? Spreading out. And uh, use my fingernail just to spread it around the tube and give a nice spread look to it. Next item. I am going to take some copper gold, it's a combination of copper and gold, angel hair. And I just take a nice, a nice quantity of it and lay it down the center. Put one wrap, fold it over, Put another wrap. And now I want to spread that out slightly. Give that a little bit of a spread to it rather than it all coming from one spot. And with this, this material, it's very, very important that I cut it 
erratic and I'm flowing off the back now if you see if you see any of the angel hairs that are really really long or just too long go ahead and just trim those off but you want that erratic look and we've spread it a little bit we have it laying over the top of the chartreuse okay and the next thing we're going to do we're taking black fin raccoon now black fin raccoon has these really beautiful guard hairs that are in it and this happens to be a fin raccoon zonker strip so, and I like to work with that rather than a patch because it gives me pretty precise quantities and I can look at it and I can pick where I really like the guard hairs for the fly and where I have a nice patch of guard hairs. And I'm going to take a modest quantity, not a really big quantity, right where those guard hairs are there, see them sticking up? twist and cut my twist okay take this just brush through your hand put your fingernail on it make it f almost frizz out now this we're gonna put on so the guard hairs are flowing with the angel hair a little bit longer spin it look at it spin it see which is the best flow for it grab a little bit of this hair and pull it a little longer you want no blunt ends everything flows okay I like that and you grab it and we trim now I'm going to put this on square on top and right on the top of the Arctic Fox and the Angel Hair. Put a couple of wraps. Now I want to look at it side to side. I want the Arctic Fox just showing side to side. And the Fin Raccoon also giving a little bulbous look to it. And we have our guard hairs coming out the back. Okay, tail, the wing starts with the chartreuse, joins the tail, the gold line coming down, the gold copper line, and the black over the top of it. And now I just have to look at that fin raccoon and make sure that it's not going to creep forward on me. And now this I am going to go right to the front cover. You don't have to worry about compressing the uh, tube because you do have that you do have that spike in there, and that's going to keep your keep your diameter of the inside of the tube. Okay. Now at this point I switch threads, and I'm just going to I'm just going to tie off the white and I'm going to go to black. Okay, so I'm just going to attach the black. Okay. And then the next thing is I'm going to take one strand of gold crystal flash. 
Okay, and I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to lay one on one side, running right, right up the, the line created by the black fin raccoon and the chartreuse. And I'm going to bend it over. So I have two, two strands. Now I don't want them to be the same length. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Right down the middle. Bend it back. And now I've got that sparkle in the sides. Okay. Next item is I'm going back to the fin raccoon. And this one, I need to be the longest lengths. So I'm going to take a patch, not as, not as many fibers, but longer. And I'm going to take a patch with some nice guard hairs in it. Take that right down to the bottom so I get my full length out of it. If this was longer fly, I would be using uh, I would be using much longer materials, extra long temple dog or even uh, Icelandic sheep. But I'm trying to keep this fly somewhat somewhat shorter, so it can be uh, fished in regular kind of water. I don't need a really long long fly. Okay, so this one's going to be somewhat longer, not too much longer, but just a tad longer than the top one that got put on. Got the flash in there running up the side. We've got the chartreuse in the bottom. And what you always have to remember is what's the fish seeing? And the fish is seeing from below. And we have to always think about that when we're tying these flies or any fly. So a lot of times the fish is just looking at it from below, swinging by. They're not coming around the side and looking at it like we are here. All right. All right, now I've prepared a couple of jungle cock nails. I'm going to put them on his eyes. And these I want to put right in the same line as that gold crystal flash. I've pre-sized these to be the same length by how much of the uh, of the barbules that I took off. And I'll put the other one on this side. If I just put my if I just put my tie in right where the right where the uh, barbules end they're both going to be the same length All 
Right, trim that, both sides. Okay. All right, next thing on this fly, and really the last thing on this fly is we want to put a, we're going to put a collar on the front. So I'm going to just take a uh, cape, natural black cape, and pick out a feather that um, I think is going to be a good length for this and take off the front edge I mean, you can put this on and fold it if you like um, for these flies I prefer to just remove the edge and turn the fly over Tie it in on the bottom. And trim. And just go ahead and wrap it around as a collar. And you're putting one in front of the other. And you're just watching that the stem rides right in front. Pulling, brushing back. I think that's Plenty, four wraps. Just go ahead and secure it off. And then I always take everything, bend it back. And now I'm just putting one thread next to the other going back. And it'll just go up on those forward forward barbules and sit your whole feather back for you. Remove this. Look at our head, make sure we're covering everything, making a nice shape in the front. This uh, Gordon Griffiths thread is so thin, just kind of melts in, make it have a nice looking shape to the head. Finish the whip finish. fly like this I would put at least four coats I put I will put two base coats I'd put two base coats a head finish on the, on the fly and then two finishing coats of the lighter shine material and you get a nice looking head fish don't care fishermen do
rotate this to it's going to penetrate in I rotate it because I want the I want the um, head cement to set up towards the outside it gives me a much smoother slicker finish by the time I put my four coats on black bear green butt microtube there it is